Hi, I'm Cher Kaufman. I am international artist and author of The Artful Mandala Coloring Book and The Ancient Alchemy Coloring Book. And today, I'm going to give you some tips on gel pens. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about gel pens and some tips to use them with coloring books. But you can use these for any uh, activity that you're going to be doing that's craft related. So I have a couple of different brands and I'm not going to necessarily do a review on the brands but I am going to show you that gel pens vary in how they work, how they look, and how you can use them. So what I have here in the blue one here is a Tech Writer gel and this is part of a set of 100 pens right now that uh, a lot of people have been purchasing. The green one here is from The Right Dudes and this is one that I got at an office supply store. And this one is the Sakura Moonlight gel pens. These are often at uh, art supply stores um, used on black paper. And the last one I have is one that's actually from an office supply store that we often use just for our handwriting purposes, one that we might use for uh, our regular day-to-day -day life. But I, I just want to show you that there are gel pens out there. And so even if you don't have something fancy, you'll have limited color supply, but you can work with some stronger looking uh, gel pens. And so this is a Pilot. This is just a Pilot G2 uh, gel pen. So first here, what we have is the Tech Writer gel. And I've already scribbled down a little bit of what this looks like. This one happens to be kind of glittery. I just want to show you how, how easily they glide. And I also want to show you how easily they smear. So one of the things when you're working with a gel pen is this is a brand new tool. This is not like a colored pencil. This is not like a marker. This is a very wet application and it's very easy to smear. So when people are using this for coloring purposes or for art design, they have to be very careful about where they put their hand in application to where they have just drawn. So just to show you how these other ones here move. And you'll start to see a little color variation from the green and the blue I just did on that pink. And the pilot one here. So you'll notice that they are all very easily smeared. Well, here's the cool thing. What we're going to do is we're going to use this to our advantage today. And we're going to learn how to use blending with gel pen. So I'm going to switch over to one of my coloring pages from the Artful Mandala coloring book. And what I have done here is I have used a, a glittery, it's, it's a real sparkly uh, pink color. This one is from uh, the Tech Writer. And what you'll notice is if I do a little bit of a uh, shift in the light, you might notice that there's a little bit of a sparkle. And, and that's the desired look from the gel pen when there's straight application. Depending on the paper that you're using, some coloring books do not have very thick paper. Some of them are very thin and it will bleed through the back. This paper here is actually a pretty good quality paper and you can see an impression of the ink, but it's not really going through to the back. And so that's kind of a good sign of how I want to work with this. But our full mandala has single sided pages, so I'm not going to lose any coloring on uh, my coloring pages. So what I've done is I have just used my gel pen and I colored every other one with this glittery pencil, I mean pen. But what I want to show you is how to use a gel pen in application with other colors and how to work with it in a way that will work for thinner papers and also for blending. So the tools that I'm going to use are I have used a um, this is called a Mulberry Prismacolor pencil, and I have colored every other one from the, this one's glittery, this one's glittery, this one's glittery, this one's glittery, so those are gel pen. And those ones that were in the middle, in between, I used pencil, and I just colored those. So these two here, I've used colored pencil, and I've used my uh, orange on the top, 
and adjust a little bit of yellow right in the corners here to create a little bit of a highlight and a little bit of uh, blending of the orange and the yellow in the top petal and this one is just a straight mulberry. Now here's where the fun begins. I've got two additional tools I'm going to show you. One of them is I have a very thin plastic plate with just a little bit of water down at the bottom and I have a straight thin bristle brush. This is not one of the brushes that have a, let me show you here the difference. These are two very different brushes. This one has the pointed tip. This is not the kind that I'm using. I want one that has a little bit of soft give, but I really want it to be more of a firmer brush. And I'm going to use a paper towel on the side here. So what I do when I'm using my, there's, there's a wet and a dry way to use the gel pen. I'm going to show you both ways. With a dry brush, what I'll do is simply take a little bit of this coloring down at the end and just pull it while it's wet up into my pencil and it'll create a little bit of a blending. And I'll do the same thing at the top here where I've got a little bit of gel. I'm going to take a dry brush and I'm going to begin to pull that down into my pencil and it creates a blended effect. The wet application is, I'm going to clean that off just a little bit for you. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply the gel at the bottom here and I am going to take my brush and I'm going to put it just at what I call the shoreline of the water. In other words, I'm not going to have it go swimming and dunk it into the water. It's more like the shoreline. And I'm going to just get rid of any extra water and I'm going to blot out the extra. So I really want a damp brush, not a wet brush. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I just take the tip of my damp brush and I'm going to move the gel pen into my pencil. And the effect is that it softens and fills any white that was left in the paper from the pencil that didn't fill in. It's going to fill that in. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add some of the gel. And I can add a little bit of water at the shoreline, get rid of extra, blot that out. And then I can begin to blend this in. And I can take this as far as I want into the pencil. And what's nice is that because the pencil is done first, it protects the paper from the absorption of the wet medium of the gel pen. So if I flip this over, you're not going to really see the gel that I put on those petals. You're going to see where I used the gel all by itself from those tiny little ones before. But the pencil is actually a huge little trick when you're using gel is that it, it allows it to glide on the top of that wax from the pencil and you can get a real nice blended effect and it almost creates like a watercolor wash because you can bring that down. Now I do caution don't use a lot of water because then you're going to saturate your paper and that's going to begin to break up your paper. You're going to end up with little balls of paper uh, because this is most coloring books are not designed to take wet mediums which is why when you're using a gel pen you oftentimes will find little indentations in the paper where it has been pushed into the paper or soaked in and if you're going to be using any kind of wet application with a brush you want to make sure that it is damp and not wet. So let's show you another example. Okay now this one's kind of a little bit of a crazy example. I'm using this one. I used it in a class uh, that I was teaching a private class with that sometimes designs have spaces that are so tiny that you can't really color in every single little place. And uh, if you have a um, like a fine, to fine tip marker or uh, you want to use your gel pens, that's fine. You can get into those tiny spaces. But often what happens is that if people cannot concentrate on the small places, then you can do, say, bands of color, and this is just colored pencil. But here's what's cool, is that you can see these little pink dots that are in here. This is using the application of putting this gel pen randomly placed in different places 
in the paper and then using the wet application where I just take the brush at the shoreline, blot out the extra water on a paper towel, and then I just kind of begin to move this around. It's going to give it, it's going to give it a watercolor effect. It's going to change the image just a little bit. And if you're using a glitter type gel pen, it will begin to create some sparkle in different places. So just out of curiosity, I'm going to grab one of these blue ones just to see what does that look like? What does it do if I add blue into some random places? Just so you can see what it looks like to do gel pen. Uh, let's get rid of some of the pink on the brush here. Okay. See if that's dark enough. Now I'm using this example um, for coloring. Not that I think it's the best coloring uh, page in the world, but it's a good example to play with when I feel like there's so much color saturation and I want to create something of interest. I'm actually really curious to see what an orange would look like on this. I'm going to add some orange and I'm going to actually do it a little bit bigger and kind of random because my idea is that I do want to go ahead and blend this out. But it doesn't have to be exact. So this here is just to show you ways to experiment. It doesn't have to be where the gel pen stays within the lines. You can actually go right on top of large areas and be spread around just to add touches of color to create excitement or interest or to uh, bring your eye to something that uh, maybe you didn't notice before. Okay, so here is an example where I also used pencil. I'm going to move this here a little bit. Colored pencil. And in this case, I was using Prisma color pencils. And I was showing a, a private class how the differences between gel pen by themselves will work. And I'll show you a, a close up here of what this looks like right here. In this area, that is where gel pen was used in a wet brush and it began to ball up the paper. And what I'll show you on the back here is that when the gel pen was applied and the wet, uh, the damp brush was applied, you can see where it began to saturate the paper. And there's another example that I was giving the class there. But when I have pencil that is applied first, the wax creates that barrier and then the gel pen can glide on top of that. So I have a couple of areas here that I have not done the gel pen on, so I thought I would show you how I would do the gel pen for this area. Okay, now with gel pen, it is usually advised that you start with the light area first and you pull that area into the dark. That way you're not saturating the dark gel pen into the light areas. So I'm going to be doing this area right here and I'm going to apply some yellow gel. And the yellow gel is really going to be kind of hard for you to see, but you'll notice it as we begin to move to the other the other colors. Okay, now I'm just going to clean this brush out because I want to get a clean clean application when I begin to show you the green. So now I'm going to do the green right here along the edge on both sides. I'm going to dip my brush in just at the shoreline, get rid of the extra water blot it out on a paper towel, and then I'm going to begin to pull it from the edge towards the center. And you'll notice that it has almost like a watercolor effect and begins to fill in the white of the paper. And I don't want to go over it too much because I don't want to saturate it with a whole bunch of water, but I do want to pick up some of that gel pen and begin to move it. Okay, so now before I leave here, normally the way I work is I work in a very um, 
systematic way where if I'm going to be doing yellow and green, I would go to my next place and do yellow and green and go to my next place and do yellow and green and then come back and work with my other colors just so that I can see how this begins to smooth out before I go to someplace else. But just to show you in this area here, I'm going to begin with the lightest. So I'm going to do my gel pen on the very top edge right here. Go to the shoreline, add a little water, blot out the extra. And then I'm going to pull that in. And you'll notice it almost has like a watercolor effect. It begins to smooth out any changes from the colored pencils that didn't get filled in. And I'm going to add a little bit of gel pen down at the very bottom here. Now this purple one, there's a lot of, uh, of gel pen that was released from that. So I'm going to just see what it's like to do this with a, without dipping my brush into the water. Okay, so you can see here how it begins to change that space from what this looks like here. Now if I want to, I can go back at any time and I can add more colored pencil, I can add more gel pen if I want more of the gel pen to be seen. What I do suggest though is uh, be very careful about how many applications of the damp brush that you use paper's holding up pretty well. Again, that's from an example from a private class when I did the gel pen by itself and it's saturated into the paper. So I'll do this one more time just to show you. And I'll do just this circle -y part here. So we'll do the, the light blue gel. And this one actually has a little bit of a glitter to it. I'm just taking my brush at the shoreline, dabbing out the extra blot out the extra on paper towel and begin to pull this down. Okay, and now I'm going to do the purple just to show you that one more time. Now I have had some people tell me that they get uh, great results without having to do the damp brush, which is fine, which is great. If you're getting exactly the results you need, that's fine. I just happen to like that it pulls a little bit more of the color if I have a little bit of a damp brush. So again, you can see this is just pencil over here, and this is with a gel pen that's been saturated with just a little bit of a damp brush and pulled into the pencil. And same thing here, this is all pencil with a little bit of gel, gel pen that has been pulled towards the center and it gives it a shadowy effect that's there. There's gel pen on the green, blue, purple. There's some gel pen in the yellow pulled up this way and it just sort of smooths all of that out. This is light blue pencil with a little bit of green gel pen that has been pulled towards the center. And here is yellow pencil with orange gel pen that has been pulled towards the center. And gel pen around the edge here and pulled out from the center to create just a little bit of a shadow effect. Okay, so we'll show you one more example just so that you can have an idea of what it looks like with a different color scheme. This is all Prismacolor pencil that's been put down. I'm just going to get my pencil ready or my brush ready. And I am going to use kind of a hot pink, um, kind of a hot pink gel pen. What I have here is red, orange, and yellow and combinations thereof. We'll leave this one with just pencil so that you can see what that looks like. I'm going to put gel pen. I'm just going to draw it straight across the edge here. And I'm going to go ahead and do my brush one more time. And I'm going to begin to pull this towards the center.
And if I want to do a little bit of a deeper color, let's see, what if I did, here's one that's a little bit of a, uh, a brownish color. So let's just out of curiosity, just take that against this orange here. It's a little bit more of a bronze color. And I'm going to flip my page around because I want this to be the easiest as possible for my wrist. You want to make it easy for you to work with. So that way it's just not as straight of a line. Now I am interested in this coloring but I think I want to add a little bit more to it. I, I think I'd like it to be a little bit deeper so I'm actually going to add a little bit more. I'm going to go a little higher up. Just to see what this will do how it will play. Okay, so I kind of like that this is very subtle. The, obviously my eye is picking up something is different, but it doesn't look like it's a straight line as much. It's beginning to soften. You can tell the difference from this side to here. So on this side, We'll go ahead and we'll change. We'll do the opposite colors. I'll do this brown one along the edge here just so that we can see what does it look like if it's with that pink color. Just dab my thing and begin to pull this gently. And you can begin to see that it, it softens and fills in some of the white spaces also of the pencil. Now I'm curious, so I'm going to flip it over and see on the back. So on the back here, I see a little bit of where that gel line is, but because my brush is damp and not wet, it's not causing any problems with the paper because the wax of the pencil is actually protecting the absorption and so the gel pen can then simply glide on the top. Okay, so here are the four different pens that I was experimenting with. This is the, the Tech Writer, the, the Writer Dudes gel pen, and the Sakura Moonlight pen, and the Pilot G2. What I just wanted to show you here is that if I had my pencil down and I did a dry brush effect, how far it would take it, and if I did a wet brush effect, how far it would take it. And some of these are pretty subtle. They may not even be able to be picked up by uh, what you're viewing, but I do want you to experiment with. This is very different than if I just take my pencil down. The gel pen is going to fill in all these little white spaces. Here is an example of where I put gel pen down first on the right hand side of each one of these blocks, and then I took colored pencil and I applied it on top and then I put a strip of a white application to see if the gel pen would begin to move and blend. One thing I will mention here is that if you decide to use gel pen and cover it up with pencil, in other words, you've colored something in and want to add detail with your colored pencil, if you are using something that you particularly like the gloss, the metallic or the glittery effect of, the wax of your colored pencil will begin to co cover that up. So it is advised to do your pencil first and then begin to add your gel pen on top to add additional detail and then if you decide to use the brush technique where you can move gel pen over into your pencil, you'll notice here kind of fills in some of the white spaces, that your effect of the gel pen, the glitter or the metallic, will still stay intact because it's not being covered up by wax. And here I just wanted to show you an example of what it looks like for shading. So this is uh, two different colored pencils. There's some dark blue and some light blue. And then the, the Tech Rider gel glitter pen here and how it moved it in. And it actually covered into this space and it almost gives it a watercolor effect. It softens that. This was done with two different green uh, pencils and the green gel pen. This is with orange and red colored pencils and the Sakura Moonlight that was uh, kind of a neon, a neon color. 
And then this was that Pilot. This is just the regular Pilot gel pen that we often use for writing. Just to show you that if in a bind and you wanted to play, you could use something even like this. So the designs that I used for examples are from this book, the Artful Mandala Coloring Book. If you're interested in the designs that we showed for coloring today, I encourage you to check out the book, the Artful Mandala Coloring Book, Creative Designs for Fun and Meditation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Cher Kaufman. Until next time, from the drawing desk, may you find more color in your day.